Hey everybody, welcome to Planes Over It, and uh, we are continuing with our A320 series, and I think this is the much most uh, uh, awaited video of the 320 series, and we are doing power plant. And uh, disclaimer remains the same: do not use any of this information that you study here, especially from power plant, of course. Um, always refers to refer to your manuals. All right, so power plant. What I'm doing is dividing into three uh, videos because it's actually a really big uh, topic. So, and in this video, I'm going to discuss uh, the CFM 56-5 Bravo. I will also put up a video where I'll compare CFM versus IAE, but that will be a different video altogether. But uh, the power plant videos that I'm going to make will be dealing with CFM. Okay, so the engines are turbofan engines that have high bypass ratio, a FedEx, that is a full authority digital engine control, a fuel system, oil system, air system, thrust reversal system, ignition system and start system. As you can see on this diagram, this is what we'll discuss through the three videos. Engine, FedEx, fuel system, oil system, ignition, thrust reverses, the pneumatics or the air system. Okay, so the engine, let's talk about the engine first. So this is what an engine looks like if it is cut across. So this is the fan here and uh, there are compressors, LP compressor, HP compressor, combustion chamber, HP turbine, LP turbine. VBV, VSV, and the accessory box. So the LP compressor has four stages. The LP turbine also has four stages, as you can see here. The HP compressor, though, has nine stages, and the HP turbine is a single stage. So each there's there are two assemblies basically: L, uh, low pressure assembly and a high pressure assembly. So the low pressure assembly obviously has these stages: the shaft and the turbine. Similarly, the high pressure assembly has a shaft and the turbine and the compressor itself okay so the combustion chamber is where this is the combustion chamber is where your fuel and air gets mixed and the FedEx has total control on that and uh, depending on your altitude and various other factors that it, it considers it will mix the fuel is to air ratio all right air is to fuel ratio sorry so now this is accessory box. Now accessory box is the one where you have the oil feed pump, the FedEx alternator is here, the engine driven generators, the IDGs are here, and uh, the hydraulic pumps that pressurize the green and yellow hydraulic systems respectively is there. And also the main engine fuel pump that provides combustion chamber with the fuel that is also in this pneumatic starter that enables engine start. Accessory box is a mechanical linkage that runs all the accessories inside the gear box. Okay, uh, we'll talk about something about variable bleed valve and the variable stator vanes. Now variable bleed valve is uh, upstream of the HP compressor as you can see here and it depends the setting of the compressor inlet temperature and on the N2. Now this is important in terms of it requires if the engine requires more bleed. So it will be fully open as you can see it will be fully open during start or low thrust or during fast deceleration okay and it will be fully closed in high thrust positions these bleed valves so in high thrust you really do not need more bleed so it will be shutting down it will be off uh, it will be closed and it will be fully open during low thrust conditions. Now variable stator vane on the other hand is fully closed during an engine start and fully open at high engine thrust. So it is this is used to maintain high compressor uh, efficiency as an optimum compressor efficiency at a steady state. And it also gives a good stall margin for the transient engine operations. Okay, so that's all about the engine. The fan is the of course the one that you see in the front that is actually uh, pulling and sucking in air for the engine to work and this side you have the exhaust all right so that's about engine now we'll talk about fedex now fedex stands for fully full authority digital engine control it is also called the ecu very important electronic control unit not engine control unit it's electronic control unit it has two channels a and b one is active and one is standby if one channel fails the other takes over automatically now it has a magnetic alternator for an internal power source so it doesn't depend on the aircraft uh, power source at all it has an own internal source it is mounted on the fan case the EIU engine interface unit interacts and shares data with the FedEx for engine management so it's a interface unit between the FedEx and the other systems I'll just show it to you on the next slide here 
So this is the FedEx here, and also called the ECU, okay, electronic control unit that is. So it controls various systems, ignition system, start valve, thrust reversal system, fuel return valve, cooling, engine cooling, etc. And these are the engine sensors that are giving information to FedEx. Now EIU here is between the air conditioning, LG, CIU, NTIs and masters, this uh, switching on and uh, the mode selectors, man, engine man start, etc. And this shares information to FedEx. And accordingly to the requirement now, if there's more uh, air conditioning demand, the FedEx will be told and hence it will be processing for a higher engine thrust setting. Okay. Now FedEx is responsible for uh, showing any uh, warnings on the in engine warning display and the display on the bottom ECAM and ADRS gets direct information from FedEx. Okay. So this is what the architecture looks like. All right. The functions of the FedEx there are way too many, but we will try to discuss um, the main ones. So it controls the gas generator. All these comes under the gas generator itself. Now this is important protection against engine exceeding limits. So this protection against N1 and N2 overspeeds, monitoring of EGT during engine start. So it'll actually shut down automatic. Automatic uh, shutdown will be there. I'll just discuss power management. Automatic control of the engine thrust setting, that's pretty obvious. Computation of thrust parameter limits, depending on the uh, ambient conditions, it will compute thrust parameters. It will also man manually management, uh, manage the function of the thrust lever position and automatic management of power auto thrust demand. This, this is the most important one. Automatic engine start sequence. So it controls the start valve, high pressure fuel valve the fuel flow the ignition itself it controls all of this it monitors n1 n2 fuel flow egt and initiation of abort and recycle on the ground only very important on the ground it will actually it can uh, it has the authority to abort and recycle a start which is not up to expectations if you have a high egt or a overspeed condition it will actually shut down and recycle again uh, then in the manual engine start sequence, it does passive monitoring of the engine. It does it doesn't have um, you know auto shutdown feature, and uh, it has control of start valve, high pressure fuel valve, and the ignition. But the pilot has the ultimate authority to shut down the engine in the manual engine start starting sequence. Thrust reversal control. There's actuation of blocker doors, engine setting during reverses operation. What's the setting that is to be followed? Fuel recirculation control, it recirculates fuel to fuel tanks and used for cooling, we'll discuss in the fuel system. Transmission of engine parameters to the cockpit, as I told you in the architecture diagram. Primary engine parameters, starting system status, FedEx system status. It detects and isolates records and fail of failures in the engine and it also helps provides itself FedEx cooling. Now this is very important slide here, idle modes of FedEx. So there are three types of that modulated approach and reverse okay so modulated it depends is regulated according depends on the bleed system demand and ambient conditions so suppose your bleed system demands more pneumatics so the modulated uh, idle will be increased and this will happen only when in flight your flaps are zero clean configuration in flight and on ground there are no reverses selected because if reverses are selected you are into reverse idle so in flight when the flaps are zero and on ground there's no reverses this is when the modulated idle is working approach idle approach idle is based on your aircraft altitude when you're coming into approach and in flight it will approach is obviously in flight and it is when flaps are not at zero any other configuration you will move to approach idle and uh, it approach idle is important because it helps engine it is a feature of it is helps engine accelerate rapidly from idle to go around thrust Okay, this is very important in case of a go around you should you require immediate because otherwise jet engines take a spooling time but approach idle will consider that. Reverse idle will function selected when on ground when reverse idle is selected that's when your reverse idle kicks in and the feature most important and commonly asked question here is reverse idle is actually slightly higher than forward thrust. Okay, so it is actually higher than forward thrust to improve brake efficiency. All right. Now this is the FedEx power supply diagram here. So when when does the FedEx get its power? So 
when the first aircraft is energized in in you know in terms of you have a external ground power or any other supply it will work for 5 minutes do its tests and then shut down okay and when your ignition and start is selected again the power will be on to fedex and when the master switch is on it will still be on and when the engine is started and 12% n2 this is the important figure 12% n2 it is self powered by its magnetic alternator okay and when the master is off and below 12% n2 it will stay for 5 minutes do its recording and anything else and maintain the data and then it will switch off so the bottom line is the fedex system is self powered about 12% n2 also important it's marked here if engine mode selector is set to normal position before the engine start fedex supply is cut off in this position here now if your engine mode selector is selected to normal in this position it will actually cut off the fedex power supply it is assuming that you are no more starting the engine and hence you do not need the fedex all right i hope fedex power supply is clear as well so that's all for this video uh, these are the quiz links you will also find them on the description and uh, yes all right this is uh, something interesting and something big uh, we are doing live on uh, facebook and we'll discuss a320 doubts and any comments and any suggestions that you guys have and uh, we'll have a good discussion on the a320 family aircraft and this is on the 25 25th march of 2017 save this date and you'll come on to facebook.com/planesoverhead join us on facebook I'll see you there. And thanks for watching this video guys. Have a great day and subscribe to the YouTube channel if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share this video as well because I know power plant is what you guys have been waiting for and uh, you can find me on all these links here, YouTube, Facebook, WhatsApp, email, anything of this. All right guys, cheers and happy landings. Have a great day. Take care. Bye bye.